Hey guys, today I've decided to show you a simple loadout video of what I rock every weekend. Simple because as you see, I don't really run the full-blown operator look. By this I mean a full backpack, utility pouches on utility pouches, or generally something to reach for in every situation. I've even strayed away from using camouflage and rather fielding a much darker, punkier style almost that might remind you of someone you'd run into during a PUBG game so I'm told. However, while I do sacrifice utility with this loadout, I've grown very accustomed to a very mobile or nimble playstyle with a very aggressive look. As the standard, I will be naming all the gear I'm currently using. There isn't too much to cover, so this should be fairly easy top to bottom for you to check out. Starting with the head, we've got the Lancer Tactical Maritime CA805B Helmet. That was a doozy. This is one of Lancer Tactical's more higher-end helmets, and it comes standard with the typical mounting options for the front, whether it be a GoPro camera or night vision goggles. Right now, I have a 3D printed Brain Exploder GoPro mount attached. I've made good use of these side mounts for my ear protection. These are simple earmuffs, which I've de-soundproofed. I use these to protect my ears, and it also gives the helmet a more aggressive style. I've got the Revision Desert Locust Goggles. Been using these since day one and they've been great. Very comfortable, easy to change lenses for bright or dim daylight situations. These were about 100 bucks and are worth every penny. Without a doubt, you've noticed my Rode Video Micro. This little guy has greatly enhanced the audio quality of my videos, and I honestly feel naked without it on my helmet. There's also an adapter that bridges the connection between my GoPro and my Rode. I've also got a battery pack going from the back of my helmet to this adapter, allowing full power throughout an entire long day of airsoft without the fear of my Rode killing my GoPro's battery too early. You'll also notice the bullets. From far away, they seem real, but it's really just plastic, super glue, and Velcro squares. It was actually really easy to make it work. Moving on to the chest, I've kept it rather simple here. All I needed was something to hold my mags and feel comfortable as well as remain tight to the chest while I'm running around, and that's why I grabbed the Emerson RRV chest rig. I've been using this since day one and it's honestly super comfortable and very affordable. I think I bought it for about 50 bucks. It's far from bulky and shoulder support is amazing. The middle section folds down, but instead I've got a thin compartment attached for things like business cards or patches. I've only got four magazines for my primary on here. There's technically room for more if I move things around but the way I've got it set up allows me to quickly grab a fresh magazine without hassle. Speaking of the magazines, these are actually lower grade G&G &G 105 round magazines with smoked outer shells that have actually greatly improved since. I've replaced the springs to carry heavier BBs, painted the inside of the spring casing red, and now they look extremely unique and I won't ever have to worry about paint chipping. These magazines sit inside tactical fast hard shell pouches. These hold my magazines tight enough for me to do a tactical handstand out there on the field, but I'm able to pull them out without a problem when it's go time. Something does stand out here, and that would be my orange whistle. Um, it comes with the backpack, so I don't really know what else to tell you. The rest of the backpack is black and provides me back protection as well as simple storage for little things like other people's lost items I seem to always find out there while I'm playing. I've also got my HPA tank in there as well as my rubber chicken. The shirt underneath is just a simple gray dress shirt. It's actually pretty sturdy and resistant to simple tearing. Good enough for me. When it comes to gloves, there's not much to talk about here. Black and inexpensive tactical gloves I grabbed off Amazon. They're a little worn as you can see with the slight tearing. I've been meaning to actually grab new gloves, but I'm lazy, so I get my girlfriend to sew any tearing back together until I actually buy myself a new pair. Alright, let's discuss my lower half. I've gone through a few different types of pants when it comes to airsoft, but none have been quite as amazing as these new motorcycle pants. To me, motorcycle pants are an absolute hidden gem when it comes to airsoft. These bad boys are flexible, breathable thanks to the mesh, and even have knee pads built in. Since I'm not going for that operator style, these pants are an absolute must have for me. All the stretchy parts you'd imagine on a pristine pair of airsoft pants are present here, and since I'm not a fan of baggy tactical pants, 
These pants are incredible. I grabbed these off of Amazon and they come in many different variations and colors. I've also got my sidearm here. It's attached to my Cytac hardshell leg holster, which is attached to my Cytac drop leg platform. I've actually got it attached directly to my belt rather than a clip attached to my belt. This brings the whole platform a little higher to my waist and keeps the gun tighter to my thigh. I've gone through a few sidearms already, but none have been quite as entertaining to use as this KWC M92 Beretta. It's built to last, can take a beating while I'm crawling around in the dirt, and runs on CO2, so I've had zero issues with shooting in all weather conditions. And yes, yes it shoots full auto and it's very satisfying. Not much to say about the shoes, they're hiking shoes I can easily run in, although I could probably improve on the ankle support. I got them because they're comfortable and waterproof, which is an absolute must. The fun thing about my loadout is every weekend I like to swap out my mesh mask and bullets for a different style and color. Here we've got the classic style. This is the first mask I painted and strangely it's the most comfortable. This is the jagged teeth style with the plain bullets. Here we've got one of my favorites, the Smiley. This mask is designed off the awesome face and I've paired it with yellow and black bullets. Looks great from far away. Moving on we have my red mask. Red's my favorite color. It felt necessary to throw something red on every now and then when I'm out shooting. I've actually repainted this one twice. Might repaint it a third time. This one's my shark mask. One of my more vibrant masks. Big teeth, very aquatic style to it. This one's paired with bullets painted blue with white tips. Another favorite of mine. Here's my zebra mask. This mask is great in the snow, but I don't let weather decide what mask I wear. Strangely, the black and white stripes complement the rest of my gear very well, which might be why I like the mask so much. The spiraled bullets are actually the most annoying to repaint whenever they get chipped from a BB. I gotta redo the spiral, but I always end up getting paint all over my fingers. Here's a newer one I painted. This is the bullseye. Pretty simple design. Pretty much painted a target on my face for people to aim at. People like to joke around and tell me they all know where to aim when they see me out on the field. This mask's color was inspired by my gun's new paint job, but I didn't want to commit to a full-blown silver mask. I kept the silver to a minimum, only really painting the bullet silver with black tips. Ah yes, the jack-o'-lantern. I'll wear this mask for the entire month of October. Very cool mask and I'm very pleased with how it turned out when I finished painting it. Classic orange and black, can't go wrong, 10 out of 10 spooks. Depending on the mask I decide to bring for the day, I'll usually try and pair it with the same color of gloves. For now, the only other gloves I've gotten are yellow gloves, which I'll wear with my smiley mask, or red gloves, which I'll wear with my red mask. So. We've talked about my gear, including my sidearm. Now it's time to whip out my primary. This is my ARP 556, kitted with a Polestar F2 engine for a little bit of HPA fun. I used it stock just once before gutting it and painting it silver in various segments. Visually, it's like a black sports car with silver trim and a little red under the hood. Now let's get the scope out of the way here before anyone says something. Yes, it wobbles but only when I'm vigorously moving about. The scope is a 1 to 9 times variable zoom mounted on a flip to side mount for CQB encounters. Hence, this is why you got that dank wobble. You'll notice the camera equipment as well as the battery banks I've got mounted to the gun. Not gonna lie, it either looks extremely excessive or extremely intimidating. Yes, the gun is probably prettier without the extra bulk, but then again I wouldn't be filming anything, would I? That being said, I've gotten pretty accustomed to the extra junk. The battery banks provide power for about two days worth of recording without recharging and it gives me the carefree ability to get as much footage as I want out on the field. The gun is actually not very heavy at all, despite what you might think. Compared to a regular airsoft gun, yes, it's a little heavier, but it doesn't weigh me down. The center of balance isn't out of whack and the gun doesn't mess with my ability to move around quickly. Like I said, I've gotten pretty used to it throughout my time filming. I can barely tell the difference. 
On the inside, we got the Max ME Pro hop-up system, paired with a flat hop nub. This specific model is designed for Crytax and Tokyo Marui's, but I've modified the hop-up to fit and I've got no problems. The barrel is R-hopped and the suppressor is just for looks. I prefer things loud. Overall, this gun is great. I guess you could say I've managed to imprint my persona onto this gun and it feels part of me when I'm out there having fun. So there you have it. That's me. That's everything I bring out to the field when it's time to play. Before we're done here, I just want to say, whether you're a loyal subscriber or you're just someone surfing YouTube looking for loadout inspirations, when it comes to Airsoft, it doesn't get any easier to express yourself through your loadout. Go full operator. Go PMC. Go with what's comfortable for you. I mean, hell, dress up as Buzz Lightyear. Have fun with yourself and express who you are as an individual through your gear. Some people's videos will tell you what to go out and buy, but the truth is, if you let your creativity run wild, it all works out in the end. Well, that about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you around.